these days it's so hard to know what's real and what's not, you know, and what's good for you and what's what's not. Don't do drugs. You know, don't get get on this. And it's signals. it's very mixed it's very signals mixed for signals. them. I was 13 when I started. I'm 26 now. You know, and, and graduated high school. I went to another program and meaning program like daytime. You know, outpatient. I'd gotten in trouble, caught with marijuana, and you know I had to do drug tests. And I. I couldn't stop, you know, I saw the consequences. They mess themselves up, they lose their ambition. It gets to your brain and it causes a lot of memory loss. It causes cognitive skills, mood changes. The problem with the left, they never connect the dots, so they embrace all change without thought of consequence. The problem with the right, we connect too many dots and we see only the bad, fearing we will become a nation of stoners. <laughs> Who do you listen to? You know, I had learned that instead of calling it addiction, it was a dependency. Why the Great Divide? Uh, I think that people who speak in the middle road terms don't get as much press. Uh, uh, sensationalism sells whatever form of media people are interested in. It's all about making money, so it misinforms the end user at times about what it can be used for or its benefits. They don't think um, people are able to make um, sound judgment about whether they want to use or not use because the truth of, of marijuana is not getting out there. I had gone to two rehabilitation centers. The first one was more based on the scare tactics and that just, for me, I put up a wall. You know, it was like, you're not going to sit here and tell me that I feel, that I should be feeling something that I don't. You know, I'm, I'm going home, I'm getting high and this is helping me get through my home life. So you're not going to tell me that like it's going to make me do this or make me do that. You know, it that didn't as a teenager that didn't sit with me right. And then the second one I went to, it was, you know, the same kind of outlook of I'm not going to tell you not to do this. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong, but let me sit down and explain to you what it is doing to your brain. You know, if you're smoking it, uh, you know, that's what we've been saying a lot during this interview you're still smoking, I, one way or another. It's, it's smoke and it's, you know, it's going into your lungs. Anything that has um, combustible properties or emits a flame is dangerous to your lungs. If you're just inhaling any like burnt material, you know, it's like hot, it can have negative effects on your lungs. And you're ingesting um, smoke into your lungs, different chemicals that are in it. Uh, the, the, I, you know, the studies are out there and are starting to come forward to see how much it does affect the adolescent brain in development and IQ. Everything was emotional. I'd smoke and then I'd get emotional. Like I'm not, I didn't let my brain develop in that aspect. You know, there's chemicals that go off in your brain naturally that, you know, were overstimulated or, you know, it makes your hippocampus smaller. So my memory was I still have problems with my memory, and I'm, I'm very aware of it. I'm not in denial about it. You know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, it kind of messes up memory. Like, no, it definitely, like, my short-term memory and long-term memory are definitely messed up. If you smoke a lot, like, you're basically wasting time when you smoke. Like, like if I go and get high, I'm not going to go do homework for two hours. Yeah, I'd sit down in class and go to go to school high. And honestly, like right now, it's probably not the best for me. This is the ending of my brain developing. And you know what I mean? As far as growth goes. There was a poll out of uh, done by Hazel and Betty Ford a couple years ago that said that 60% uh, of young people think it doesn't damage the brain at all uh, in any kind of way. When I go to workshops and I hear different things, the age of students taking drugs or experimenting with drugs is lower and lower every year. So uh, it is not uncommon for middle school students that have tried marijuana. Is there really are taking advantage over the, over the young, over the possibly the people that aren't educated in all the facts? You know, edibles are, are usually going to be sweet candied snacks, uh, whether, they're, whether they're brownies, whether they're cookies, whether they're uh, lollipops or chocolate bars or strawberry chocolate bars or uh, uh, some kind of gummy candy. Students might not be aware that there's drugs in some of these packaged goods, you know, and it's certainly an easier way for students to uh, be exposed to them. But the other issue here is that it's not like a pack of gummy bears or a, a candy bar is one serving. Usually it's four servings or eight servings or 16 servings. So people are going to be uh, taking far more marijuana than is the 
quote unquote recommended dose. You know, marijuana can be expensive. If you want good marijuana, I mean, you know, for the amount you're smoking, it's, it can add up. So there are things I think that are cheaper that, you know, that is what it could lead into a gateway. The gateway meaning you have this sensation, this false sensation of euphoria, and over time it does fade. They really do start more in the tobacco area. Uh, they will move on to alcohol typically and next move on to marijuana. As they keep progressing through these different substances is they're starting to think or believe that there's no harm. So as they keep going through this process, they start to then experiment with further drugs because they think, well, this wasn't so bad. I bet you the next step isn't so bad. One of the problems is that it can kind of give like a false sense of of safety and comfort like oh like you know drugs really aren't that bad because you grow up you know all through you know elementary school at least in Huntington County learning about how awful drugs are and then you, you know I guess you smoke weed and it's like oh like it's really not that bad like it doesn't do anything to you. Say no to drugs. The just say no messages that I grew up with in the 1980s were absolute disaster. No. 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 Because basically what happened was marijuana starting in the 1930s uh, was demonized as a drug that will uh, cause you to kill someone or kill yourself or rape someone or turn you gay or turn you schizophrenic. And none of those things are true. And some of them are uh, beyond the pale, in fact. But so when people smoke marijuana and find out that none of those things happen, they stop trusting the messenger. It's a concern for me because it's a demonization of a chemical. And that, th that then leads people to not listening to other information, which is much more relevant and reputable. I can tell you those that are in treatment for heroin, not every um, marijuana or pot smoker becomes a heroin addict, but almost every heroin addict has used or continues to use pot. What I've read is I, I feel that it's a gateway drug. And I think what society is saying now is that marijuana is an, is, is an alternative to some of these harder drugs. Um, and what they're finding is that some, some people, they're trying marijuana and it's leading to harder, you know, that next high. So when you increase those THC levels, that's what gives you the psychoactive um, ingredient that gives you that euphoric feeling, that high feeling. So the higher levels, the easier again, you become used to that and you're always then looking then for a bigger high. What's happening with dabbing is uh, people are taking uh, marijuana oil and boiling it down to a wax and then they're making it into something that's uh, very, very strong THC content. We're talking about 90% or 95% THC content. So again, uh, this isn't even marijuana now. This is just strictly the drug concentrate. It's, it's, it's hitting at the body at a higher potency and a quicker potency. So that dependency, that behavioral tendency also starts to grow quicker. So like I think as you get more comfortable with it, you can become more open to other drugs and then like consequently you could get more comfortable with those. I think that marijuana was somewhat of a gateway. It probably had a pretty significant role in uh, experimentation with other drugs, but many people wouldn't even be tempted to try them. It's the, it's the rush of trying an illegal activity that brings a lot of people into it. Marijuana being illegal and somebody using marijuana um, that they're willing to break the law for that drug. So they're willing to break the law for marijuana, they're willing to break the law for cocaine, they're willing to break the law for heroin. So in that way, it's certainly a gateway. Just for people to be aware, you know, to, to recognize what it's doing to their body and being open to it, you know, not being so closed off and automatically think that, you know, it, it's not affecting them. You know, Everything we put into our body has some kind of an effect. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people who just who tend to smoke weed like a lot, and it gets to the point where it's like, it's such an, uh, an you know, a part of you know your everyday lifestyle that yeah, it, it takes away from from doing other things. Deciding that you want to be a better person was really how I decided I wanted to stop. I just wanted to change so many things. This summer was all about being a better person. We're in college now. These are the most important years of your life to really stand out and make yourself better. Waking up each day and having like a whole bunch of whole bunch of things to do ahead of you that you choose to do and that you want to do, I think that in and of itself is more than enough, you know, stimulation. I think you have to have in mind when you're when you're smoking weed that you're not gonna be at your most productive. You know, ruin is is a subjective term. It certainly uh, can prevent 
someone from reaching their potential. If you're going to get involved in drugs or you're going to get involved in something that's harmful to you, uh, the world's a competitive place already. You don't need one strike against you. One of the biggest struggles was the fact that you know, I kind of got put down for the fact that I was struggling with being able to say that I couldn't stop smoking marijuana. And it was embarrassing. But it doesn't have to be. You know, it is, it is a dependency and it might be different than addiction, and, but it's, you know, it was affecting me and it's hard. So and to know that there's, you know, life can be fun and beautiful without being messed up and being high, so.